What's up traders? Welcome to this quick tutorial on how to set up ratio charts inside of Thinkorswim. A ratio chart is simply looking at the relationship between two tickers using division. Now on the chart we see in the background here, we're specifically looking at the relationship between the XLK, which is the tech sector, and the S&P 500. And if you were to set that up as a fraction, it might look something like this, with the XLK as the numerator and the SPY as the denominator. And that does of course give us a hard number as an answer, and it happens to be 0.33496 as of the close today, but that number isn't ultimately important. What's important is the trend and trajectory of our chart here. So if this is pointing lower, we would say that the XLK is relatively weak compared to the SPY. If this setup was the same, the XLK was still being divided by the SPY, but this was pointing higher as it was in this section of the chart here, we would say that the XLK is relatively strong to the X, uh, excuse me, SPY, right? So numerator compared to denominator. That's what this means ultimately, but how do we set it up in Thinkorswim is the question. You might be saying, well, it's a simple division operation, so let's try using the division operator in our little ticker search bar. And that's a pretty good and logical thought, but if we type in forward slash SPY, so divided by SPY, what you'll notice is Thinkorswim can't find that symbol. So it's a pretty smart platform, I'll give it that, but apparently it's not smart enough to do some basic division in our ticker box. So that's not gonna work. What if we use a ratio symbol, so a colon, right? And then we type in the SPY. Still can't find the symbol, so that is not gonna work. So what's the solution here? That's what I'm here to describe and show you during today's session. So this is currently set up. Let's go on over to a clean and blank setup. So we have the SPY. We are looking at a daily time frame chart, and there are obviously no studies or indicators currently applied to this chart. So to kick things off, all we have to do is go to the little beaker icon right here. When we click on that, we get the edit studies and strategies pop-up window. In here, I would encourage you to use the search bar and search for ratio. If you were scrolling, it would take you forever. Anyways, at the very bottom, you see the price ratio option. That's what we do want to select. We do not want to select the pair ratio option just above. So click on that, add selected, and we will press okay. You can see at the very bottom of the chart, we have now loaded that as a lower study, but how do we make it actually occupy the bulk of our chart screen? Very simple. To do so, click on the little gear icon this time, adjacent to the beaker in the top blue bar, and you should get the edit chart settings window. By default, you should be on the general tab, which is a good thing because we need to navigate to layout and uncheck where it says show price subgraph. If I press apply, you'll notice that change takes place and we no longer have the candlesticks, the price on our chart. To get rid of volume, we need to go to equities, which is right here. My arrow disappeared midpoint, there we go. Equities, and we want to uncheck volume uh, subgraph, right? So when we uncheck that, press okay, you'll notice we're left with now just the price ratio chart, essentially. And we can do some customizing, but there's one really important thing that I wanna point out before we dive into the settings. One thing you'll notice here now is that the ticker that is in this little black box, the search box, has no impact on what's going on with your ratio chart. So this can start to become a little bit deceiving. I wanted to point that out now before we move any further. And to illustrate that, let's go ahead and walk through a quick example. I'm gonna put a quick dash where this pivot high is and a quick dash where this pivot low is. If this symbol in the box were important, that should change what the uh, you know math is essentially saying. So if I turn this to T for AT&T, we should have ultimately generated a different type of ratio, but it didn't happen, right? So what I'm getting at is the ticker in this box is not what's being used to calculate the ratios. The ratios are custom inputs that we have to access via the beaker icon, which we'll get into in just a second. A couple more examples here. Again, notice how this chart looks the exact same as I navigate to the queues. We can go to Tesla, it's the same. NVIDIA, you get the gist, right? So enough of that. Let's just quickly make it back to the SPY so we have a general idea of where we're at. And then we'll go back to the beaker icon to start customizing our inputs. I'm gonna click on the beaker. We get the edit studies and strategies. I'm going to double click on our study. And now we have our list of features. So we can change the type of price read that we have for number one and two, the two things that we're comparing. 
By default, it should be set to the close, and it's the close of whatever time frame you're currently looking at. So if this is a daily chart, it's daily closes. If it's a five minute chart, we're looking at five minute closes, so on and so forth. Close is a pretty standard option, but do know you can change it. I wouldn't recommend that, but it is available if you're so inclined. So I'll leave it on close. Underneath that, we have symbol one and symbol two, and this is ultimately what's controlling the chart itself. It's not the ticker up here. So if you were to change this, and let's just make it back to the XLK, divided by the SPY, that should now take effect and we'll have the same ratio chart that we were looking at just a moment ago in that initial example. And this makes perfect sense because if we draw a line in between as if this were a fraction, right? Symbol one is what will be divided by symbol number two. So numerator and denominator. So it makes sense just in terms of, you know, logically walking through it, okay? Underneath that, we have multiplier one and multiplier two. I'm not quite sure what the use case would be for multiplying your number one symbol or multiplying your number two symbol. If someone out there watching the video who's smarter than me can shed some light on a use case for that, I would love to know genuinely just to uh, you know understand what that might be used for, but I currently don't see a purpose in that. Underneath that, we have the fast and slow length for our moving averages that we can apply to the chart. You can change those to whatever you'd like. I'm just going to show you that we can change the fast to something like a 20 and the slow to something like a 50. That's fine. Underneath that, again, I'm a simple guy. I like simple moving averages. If you like exponential, you can do that. And if you're absolutely insane, you can use Wilders or a hull moving average or a weighted moving average. Very, very rare applications for those things. But nonetheless, they are, of course, options. So I'll keep it on simple. Uh, underneath that is where we get into the customization and the actual look and feel of our chart. So the ratio itself, as it's ticking down, will read as a red line. And as it's ticking up, will read as a green line. For me, that's a little bit overwhelming. Too many colors here. I can just visually see when a line's pointing up or down, right? So I will change these both to white. That's my preference here. Uh, but you can make it whatever you want. You can change it from a line to a histogram, to a dot, to some triangles, to some dashed lines, whatever your heart's content, you can customize here in Thinkorswim. You could change it to a dashed or dotted line in different uh, sort of segments there. That's how you would do that under the ratio read, the fast average. So me personally, I only like one moving average on my ratio chart. And I know we set this to 20, but I don't want to show it at all. So to get rid of it, all you have to do is uncheck where it says show plot. So I'll go ahead and uncheck that and it should be gone when I click OK and we apply these settings. But before we do so, let me just also illustrate you can customize your slow moving average to whatever you'd like as well. So again, let's just for illustration purposes, change this to a dashed line. We'll leave it as gold because that contrasts quite nicely with white. So those are our inputs. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. I'm gonna press OK again, and just like that, you can see we now have a ratio chart of the SPY and the XLK. Just kidding. Notice what I did there. I did this very intentionally. Sometimes this study is very finicky. This did not change anything. We are still looking at the SPY and the GLD, even though we changed those things in our inputs, right? So if I go back and I come into here and I start typing this in again, so I'm gonna type in the XLK, Sometimes what you need to do is wait for it to auto-populate. So let's see if it wants to do it. There we go, XLK. And I'm going to manually click on the XLK. Now it will take the XLK. I'm gonna do the same thing for the SPY. I'm gonna type, maybe you'll have to backspace and try putting the Y in one more time. SP, yep, there we go. There's the SPY. So when I click, it auto-completes, and now that should take. So I'll press OK, I'll press OK. And now the chart changes and is truly reflecting the XLK and the SPY. Don't ask me why that glitch happens every now and then, but it does. So if you've noticed that you've changed the tickers, but in here it does not update, then you aren't looking at the correct thing. Okay, and just to illustrate one more time, it doesn't matter what you're looking at in this box right here. Look, we're looking at Tesla, and this is going to remain the same even if I navigate back to the SPY. So that's gonna ultimately do it on how to set up your ratio charts. Here's a couple of extra tips and tricks that'll save you some time. All right, if you come into the beaker icon, double click, now that you've customized this to however you'd like it to be customized, go ahead and save this as a default. It's gonna save you a ton of time in terms of coming back in and resetting all of your settings. So save that as default. Press OK, nothing will change obviously, but it's now the new default. The second big time saver is to come into style and save this as a new style. So if I drop this down, go to save style, 
I'm going to change this to ratio and really important here, include patterns and study set. If you don't click this box, then it's all for nothing. So go ahead and click on include, click save. And now let me just illustrate this. I'll load the style of default black. You can see we have that blank SPY with no indicators, volume down below, no drawings, nothing, right? But if we go back to style and we click on load style, ratio, notice how now we have the ratio chart, right? We're not gonna have to go back into our settings icon and delete the price action and delete the volume. So it's a time saver, okay? So save this as a style if you wanna save some headache. We have been showing the sector ratio grid, which is going to be this right here. And that's just built on a flexible grid in the chart pane on Thinkorswim. To do something like this, I'll quickly walk through a reset so I'll reset that for you guys. You're left with something like this. I would just get rid of everything and start from scratch so they're spaced equally. You can add one side by side. From there, you're gonna go up. You're gonna go another one up here, another one up here. Down below on the bottom now, you want a couple more. So you're gonna add in until you have eight. You can go 10, uh, but I'm just gonna use eight of, or excuse me, yeah. I'm gonna go 10, but you can use eight. Uh, you can use 12. You can use whatever number of tickers that you wanna load. I'm gonna stick with this 10 for now. Once you have your set loaded, you're gonna go ahead and go back to uncheck customize grid. And now what you're gonna do is click on the other hamburger. You're going to load symbols to cells. I have a watch list saved as the S&P sectors. So as I click that, you'll notice it populates all of those things. And then you'll have to go in manually and load those styles for ratio, okay? And you're gonna have to come in, because remember, this has no bearing on what's going on on our chart, but you're gonna have to come in and make sure that they're aligning nicely. So if you want this to truly be the XLF, right click on your ratio, come into here, change this to the XLF, and again, make sure it takes and it's not being uh, weird. So click manually on the XLF, then press okay. And notice how now this is your representation of the XLF ratio compared to the SPY. So you'll of course have to do that for all of your sectors that are listed here. You can reorganize them. If you're ever curious as to the true order and weight of your S&P sectors, you can come on over to the analyze tab. You're gonna go on over to fundamentals and in the little symbol box, you're gonna type in the SPY. When you do this, you get a list right here of your industry's overview and it's gonna break them down by percent weight in the S&P as a whole. So you can see that information technology, the XLK is the heaviest, healthcare, XLV is the second heaviest, consumer discretionary, the third, XLY, so on and so forth. So those are all the tips and tricks I have for you in terms of setting up ratio charts here inside of Thinkorswim. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, let me know down below in the comments section or by giving the video a thumbs up. If you've got any additional tutorial ideas, I would also love to hear about them down below in the comments section. And with all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.